Hi there, this is Daniel with End Time Country Living and on this program I wanted to cover soil inoculation. So that's what I'm working on this morning. I wanted to bring you along and show you a little bit of what, what, what I'm doing here. So soil inoculation really means adding some beneficial microbes to the soil that are known to be beneficial to plant growth to in order, in order to increase uh, the health of the plants during the growing season so that they can get all the nutrition that they need and in a form that's most efficient for them so that they can uh, produce uh, large amounts of complex carbohydrates and lipids in the leaves and in the sap of the plant and will, that will allow them to be, uh, defend off or not be a food source for uh, insects and beetles and things like that. So the first thing I have to do is I'm getting a water source here so I'm going to be mixing it in uh, with water and some other things to uh, for application on my beds. So I need to get my water hooked up here. I've had it off uh, or turned off for the winter here off my shed here which has just an internal valve so it allows me to have super high pressure because it's an extremely large uh, PVC valve and not a you know small diameter brass valve on the outside that would be frost free so needing to get that turned on here so I'm just gonna go back hmm. <laughs> Might be a bit challenge here. Lots of things <laughs> it's in the back corner of my shed. So uh, let me see if I can get back there to get the water turned on here. I have the valve already on the other end and the hose hooked up. So now I just got to get the water on here. Okay, got it turned on, so let's go check it, make sure there aren't any things going awry. Okay, first thing to check in is here, make sure there's no leaks here. So I've got my PVC pipe coming directly out, um, going into a three quarter inch. Um, nice smooth inside connector here, that's brass, that I connect my hose up to, so that's all nice and solid. Also have a, let's call it a little wire here that I use. I don't know, I may have shown it before. Anyway, this is just a nice smooth Y. Um, so it's a good splitter to get, so I can put a valve on one of these and get water here or put a hose on it. And then the other one just goes straight out to my garden. Okay, so let's see what we got going out here. The biggest part of this is getting all the stuff together. Oh, and I already forgot. Um, so I need to go get some molasses here. Let's go get that before I forget here. There's always one more thing running around, in and out, trying to get all this going. So I got some uh, oh, Himalayan salt. That'll be part of the mix here, because I want a mineral source. And I'll show you what I got here. Alright, that's enough here. Got a big, I don't know how big it is, like four gallons or something like that of molasses that I bought oh, five years ago or something like that. So we still have some of that and then we had some ants get into our normal gallon jug. This stuff here, um, of molasses in the house. So. That got uh, used for gardening purposes. So that's actually a lot more convenient than trying to take a cup full out of the big three, uh, four gallon, or I think it is four gallon bucket. So I'll probably actually fill this up again when I get this used up. Okay, so see what I'm forgetting here now. Okay, so I got my water. Got the valve and the little nozzle or little hose piece on here so it doesn't just spray everywhere. See if it's gonna work here. Ooh, gotta get flushed out here. 
definitely some minerals in there. Not very much pressure. I better let me go check and see. That's not good pressure. Get this undone here. Let's see any more up there. Let's go check. Okay. Go check it now. Still probably needs to be flushed out here. This is unfiltered water, where the rest of it is going through my uh, water filter system here. We've got lots of iron in the water here. There, it's a little bit of pressure. Nice, ooh, nice brown water. How about that? Lots of iron in the water. So let that. There, now it's coming clean here. Alright, that looks good enough. Okay, so now, what's the process here? So I need my bacteria inoculant in there. I need a little bit of salt. And a little bit of molasses. Could put some kelp, but I don't really need it. Good enough. Okay. So this is the what I'm putting in as an inoculant here. This is Tanio Spectrum here. So it's got about 20 different bacteria strains in here. I'm hoping this is bacteria strains I don't already have. I don't know. There's no way of really knowing. So this is kind of like a insurance, just uh, you know. Uh, in case you know these particular strains aren't naturally available in my my environment, uh, these are known to be beneficial here. So, anyway, uh, this is this is enough for an acre of land. So uh, it'll definitely last me a few years. I did buy two of them just because of the shipping. You know, just and it's pretty low cost. These are about eight, uh, nineteen dollars or something like that for a packet. So it's not terribly expensive. Um, so then I need. Um, so this is 50, oh, what is it here, 50 grams, oh, what is it here, there we go, 50 grams, 50 grams in here, and I need, so I figured it out for 120 square feet, which is what my beds are, 50 foot by two and a half feet, um, so it was coming out to be like 5 milligrams or something like that or 0.5 milligrams, like a microgram. I can't remember now what it was, but it's, I saw that you could actually get little uh, measuring spoons that were just a tiny, but it's just a tiny little bit. So it doesn't have to be exact. It's just don't, you know, don't over, don't waste it basically. I could throw the whole thing in and put it on one little bed, but that's obviously ridiculous. So, but it wouldn't hurt. I don't think it would really hurt anything. It just, you know, it's just bacteria and just a inoculant. So it's, they'll grow and, you know, reproduce dramatically so you don't need a whole lot so let's open it up here and so it's just ripped off the top here so let's take a look and see what we got going here Oops. Oops. for some reason I had it black in my mind but no this is so it's just probably a sand or something I'm not sure what's in there inert I don't think they even tell you inert carrier ingredients so I'm not sure what that is but just kind of a white powder anyway you gotta you have to be dehydrated in something here so they're kind of in stasis at this point. So the smallest uh, teaspoon I could find in the house or some measuring scoop device is an eighth of a teaspoon so I'm going to try to maybe get an, an eighth of this. I think that should be about right here. Okay, so just a tiny tiny little bit here. Something about like that is enough for a bed. Okay, so that goes in. Okay. And then, some of the salt here. This is just a guess. I don't know how much to stick in, just some. That looks about right. Probably, I don't know, quarter teaspoon maybe. Not you don't want a lot. Obviously, it's a salt, but it's got a lot of minerals too. And we'll throw some in there. 
Yeah. Better not to overdo it some. Okay, there's that. So I'm basically reproducing um, product from uh, advancing eco agriculture. Uh, they're the ones that uh, sells the Tanio, some of the Tanio products. They have some of their own stuff too, but they have one called Re Rejuvenate. Is that it? Yeah, I think it's called Rejuvenate. Um, but they rec that's one of the main products that they say really benefits uh, getting the microbial population going. Um, and it actually, once if you can get the microbial popu uh, the well, microbials, kind of a general term. Uh, bacterial population up, it will increase um, the fungal population, which is also beneficial too. They all kind of work together. When a population goes up, it creates, you know, uh, I, I know it's the nematodes that eat the bacteria. I don't quite understand all the uh, principle in there, whether, I, like the fungus somehow feeds off the bacteria as well when they die maybe. I have, I'm still learning and trying to understand it all. So, but somehow I've been told at least that the fungal population increases when you increase the bacterial population. So molasses is a food for bacteria, uh, carbohydrates in there that they can use, simple sugars. And also it's got a lot of minerals in there. Since it's unrefined, if you put in type, you know, uh, table sugar, whatever you want to call crystallized refined sugar, then it's not going to be, it'll feed the bacteria, but you're not going to get all the nice benefit of the minerals in there. You know, going into the bacteria and then once the bacteria get eaten, um, it puts it into a form the plants can use. So that's the idea here. So again, just puts them in there. About a tablespoon or so is what I have in there. Something, I don't know. Some. All right, so there's that. And then water. Stir stick here. Nice paint stick for doing stirring. So let's fill her up with water here. This is a two liter, or no, two liter, eight, eight liter, two gallon watering can for reference here. All right, stir, stir, stir. So I want to nicely suspend the bacteria in there. And we're gonna see how this goes here. Kind of an experiment here to see how application works. So I'm thinking the sprinkler is probably the best way to do a kind of a broadcast sprinkle. Put that on there, like so, and let's see what we get. Alright, we'll see if I can get two gallons on here. Good drench. There you go, kind of a light on here and then come back and kind of see. We distribute this. All right, so, well, that worked fairly well. Uh, I was able to get the two gallons e equally just enough to finish the what, end of the bed there, so I didn't have enough to come back. Uh, but that seemed to, you know, just a normal, you know, make sure it has a, a swash over the whole bed and 
Um, that, about that rate seems to cover two gallons fairly good. So um, pleased with that. So I should be able to do that for the rest of the beds. Let's do a gal uh, you know, watering can at a time. Do my dumps in there and stir it up and go inoculate the bed. So this sh um, should only need to be done once uh, for each bed. So hopefully I have enough here to cover all my beds, definitely, and I can share some with other people. And in future years, maybe next year, I'll do another inoculation just to make sure there's a good population and grow um, up there. And so this should last for quite a while, being in a, a dry state and kept in the refrigerator. It should be kept for many years here, but I'll have to... They didn't say how long it would last, so I'm assuming that hopefully it'll last me a few years here. So anyway, well, that's that for now. So I'll see if I can get the best of the beds. I got to get the tarps off the other beds in order to do this. So I got my gloves to move all the rocks and roll the, uh, pull those back each bed here. And some of them don't even have compost yet. I'm still in the process of getting all my compost out on the beds. Uh, it's quite a tedious ta task and time consuming. I don't always have time to sit there and screen compost and then pour it out there and rake it out. It takes a while. It takes at least 15 minutes to get a wheelbarrow full, sometimes 20. And then all the, you know, getting geared up and get all my shovels and screen together and then put it all away. And then, you know, there's all this <laughs> prep work and then pulling the tarps off and laying it out and then dumping and then you gotta rake it out and so there's it takes a while so unfortunately but anyway it seems to be the most beneficial to getting good plant production to have a good layer of compost is mulch and um, to kind of feed the bacterial life with uh, different types of minerals so anyway hope that was a little helpful to you just to give you an idea of what I'm what I'm trying out here I don't who knows this may be a failure or it just won't do anything so anything more than I already have that's that's the key is it is it actually adding anything that isn't already there and that's the big question mark you know whether or not I don't know if there's any real way to get your soil tested for bacteria populations that would be interesting I think it's just too new of a field I have not seen anything like that so it's just kind of a, a guess at this point here and just it's not like a $50, you know, investment here. This is, uh, well, it was about $30 for <laughs> uh, plus shipping. I was able to find it fairly low cost of shipping, but since I uh, figured, I, you know, if this does work, I want to be able to do it again and share it with others too so they don't have to go buy the stuff. They just need a, you know, tablespoon of or less of inoculant for their little garden area or something like that. So anyway, giving that a try here. So, all right, well, catch you guys on the next video. God bless, and be sure to give me a thumbs up on this video if you like it, and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, bye-bye.